Small little deal recently happened where Cresco Labs buys Cannabis MSO Columbia Care for a measly $2 billion, creating the biggest cannabis company in the United States. We're going to talk about that MA coming up. It's only entertainment. Welcome back to the Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, Capital Markets Analyst and host of your Cannabis Business Podcast. All right, Chicago based Cresco Labs and Columbia Care said that they've agreed to a blockbuster M&A worth $2 billion. This looks like a traditional merger. It's an all-stock deal. So it looks like you know, Chicago-based Cresco and New York-based Columbia decided that <clears throat> they were just going to merge. So it's not a true, I don't consider this a true acquisition because it's all stock. So this is Columbia saying we're going to be better together, accretive, than separate. You guys familiar with the Liger effect when you have a lion and a tiger and they mate and they have this beast of an animal called a Liger that's way bigger than both of them together? Like, I mean, I'm kind of a Liger. My dad was 5'9 and my mom's 5'6 and I was 6'1. So maybe that's the equivalent. Uh, Point is, is that this Liger that's being created is a monster beast. It's going to have more than 130 cannabis retail locations across 17 states and D.C., reaching about 55% of the U.S. population monstrous. This is the economies of scale I've been talking about for a long time. How are you going to compete? Oklahoma, there's 7,500 individual stores. When they come in and dominate like Walmart, how are you going to compete? It's going to be really, really challenging. So it's going to be, um, we're looking at uh, a, a crazy ass tailwind for the adult use markets. On one side, I'm excited because it's going to draw the price down. On the flip side, it's too bad because a lot of these founders and entrepreneurs uh, who didn't utilize their first move advantages are going to be gone. Um, There's still so many people in Washington State who have one one retail license. Like they're going to be this Larry's Handy Mart in a world of 7-Elevens. Like, why didn't you go out and get your five, six licenses like everybody else and expand? You thought your one location in your neighborhood was was all you needed? it's not how it works. This isn't an established industry. This is constantly moving. And if you're not jockeying for position, you're gone. You're irrelevant. You're toast. So um, there is a chance. There will be a chance for those people, or, or should I say entrepreneurs, maybe those people are not going to come back. Uh, but from the ashes, they will rise and you will have uh, your, your mom and pops at some point. So that micro brew equivalent will come. Uh, but they're all going to get wiped out in, in the meantime. You're going to see um, crazy ass revenues. So the company said that their combined pro forma annual revenue is in excess of a hundred million dollars in eight different states. Total revenue of more than one point four billion dollars, making it the largest annual revenue generator in the cannabis industry. So they're going to create a clear industry leader. And how are you going to compete against that? What do you have? You think your brand is better. You think your, you know, your flowers, more fire or whatever you think you, you don't have the advertising and marketing budget. You don't have the distribution channels. You don't have the social media to compete. You probably don't even have the product quality, uh, but you think you're going to stay in business. I mean, it's so naive of all of these folks, man. I mean, I, I love, I love the individuals, but their business sense is maddening. It's crazy to me. Um, I'm not going to sit around and tell all these people in Washington and Oregon, like I told you so, but like in a couple of years when they all lose everything, it's going to be, um, you know, it's going to, I'm just going to have to bite my lip. The part of the merger was that Cresco felt that there was a shortcoming in the fact that there were a few important states that they were missing and they wanted part of that in their portfolio. Obviously it's going to make their margins look a lot better. Whereas Columbia care had a great, geographic footprint, but they lacked scale. And that's where true synergies come at. That's why it's an accretive deal. So the combination would have scale across a lot of key states with leading brands and wholesale distribution across these states and improving that margin profile. On the flip side, there's a lot of redundancies. Anytime you have an M&A, anytime companies merge, like when I was working at Capital One um, and, um, 
you know, there, there was a, a sale to eventually a sale to E-Trade. Everybody lost their job. I left before that uh, because I saw that when I was there from ING selling, uh, our, when ING sold to Capital One, a lot of redundancies, a lot of people lost their job. Same thing is going to happen here. Uh, you have synergies, but you have re um, redundant operations, capital expenses. And so they're going to have to, you know, deleverage that. In other words, <laughs> lay people off uh, and and try to remove some of those redundancies. They're going to get rid of Columbia Care and keep with Cresco Labs and probably liquidate some of their assets in Illinois and Florida, Ohio, Maryland, and Massachusetts. And the CEO of Columbia Care will be a board member, so he'll he'll lose his job as part of the redundancies. This isn't going to be the last merger. They've um, Cresco's been been on an acquisition spree in the last few years. They went into Ohio and grabbed a chain called Verdant Creations. They were in Florida and grabbed Bloom Wellness. They were in Massachusetts and grabbed Cultivate. They went up to Pennsylvania and they grabbed Cure and Laurel Harvest. And uh, you'll see other proposed acquisitions that were terminated. So Cresco, they wanted to go into Maryland and grab Blair, didn't. Um, Tyke out of Arizona, Nevada, um, Vita Can in Florida. Uh, meanwhile, Columbia Care had its own acquisition. They spent $42 million to go into Colorado and grab Medicine Man. Medicine Man was one of the first MMJ companies um, to hit a national brand. And they were like 2011 or 2015, they were already easily a, a national brand. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually really surprised it took that long to uh, have Medicine Man be bought out. It's 2022, I would have expected that guy to be, to have sold out like by 2018. Other huge MSO um, wrap ups were, you know, Florida based True Leaf for $2.1 billion acquiring Arizona Harvest Health. Uh, you saw Verano Holdings, 40, $413 million acquisition for Goodness Growth and Terrasense, $450 or $545 million deal to buy Gage Growth. All these MSOs are, are contributing just 20% of legal cannabis. So the portion of total cannabis is, is increasing. So it used to be that the top 20 multi-state operators only had one uh, out of every five sales, you know, 20%, it's still a lot. It's 50% now. So it's getting to be more and more and it's fast. It's, it's happening fast where these these multi-state operators are scaling, expanding, and commanding a lot more market share uh, to almost triple in, in um, just two years. Columbia is going to have to close on the deal, though, because they got $65 million on the line, a termination fee, $65 million bucks if they don't close. So ooh, I'm, I'm assuming that is going to, that's going to close. They didn't specify whether Cresco would owe Columbia a termination fee, but the $2 billion is, is definitely the biggest m and transaction in history. Cresco's revenues were $821 million in the fourth quarter, and uh, fourth quarter revenue is $217 million. Cresco posted a $12 million net loss for the quarter compared to a net loss of $41 million in 2020. I want to know what their burn rate is. If you're bringing in almost a billion in revenue and you're losing $12 million, uh, I want to know why. <laughs> I'm not investing in these companies and um, I don't recommend anybody else do either. I trade them. I definitely trade them uh, with our Tor Alerts app. It'll notify you uh, on um, fundamental news like this when it happens. Uh, you know, Tilray too, we made like 40% when Tilray merged with Hexo. Um, so you want to check out the Tor Alerts app to notify you when to buy and sell pot stocks using artificial intelligence, machine learning, predictive analytics to uh, make some money because um, there is money to be made. With that, we're going to roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid. This is The Talking Hedge. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe or don't and I'm out. Don't forget to smash that like button on your way out and check out these other videos that we've got.